its webs here and it's time to be a bit shaky with this version of Free Shaman, in which Nazothian can stop us with our combos. And if you can't already tell, this is Nazoth Free Shaman, where we're trying to freeze out our opponent while we can delay until we can play down our Nazoth as a big finisher in combination with Mr. Smite and Circus Amalgams in order to have a bunch of charge minions off of our Nazoth. After trying to figure out a unique way to actually do Free Shaman, this is the thing that I came up with. Because you can actually get multiple Nazoths off with Ulnar or your Brilliant Cause. You can also get multiple Baron Glacier if you really want to go that route, but most of the time you're probably going to just use Snowfall Guardian multiple times instead of any of those. And while the Nazoth package is probably not actually needed in this deck, it does allow you to have some type of backup plan once you run out of big freezes, which is the reason why I decided to include it. So for the Mulligan Guide of this deck, it's a little bit less complex than a lot of other decks that I've put out in the past. Wind Chill is the only card that you kind of have to decide on if you're going to keep it in your open hand or not depending on what matchup it is if you're in a minion based matchup it's a great card to keep in your open hand otherwise always choose guidance over it and frostbite is a card that's really good to just have as early game removal or just to do three damage to your opponent's face loot hoarder and sleep breaker serve the same purposes in your open hand as both will allow you to generate some type of draw power in your deck. And for the three drops that I would consider keeping in my open hand, Cheeky Snowbolt is really good if you have some type of way to actually freeze out your opponent's minions, but otherwise I would not consider keeping it in the open hand. Cookie is always a great card to keep in your open hand just because it's a nice minion with a great death rattle that you can actually abuse later. And Serpent Shine portal is usually a good card to keep in your open hand just because it gives you both a minion and does three damage to whatever target that you're actually using it on that being said let's go find some games all right time for a game against warlock we're going to mulligan away the two other cards getting another amalgam which is not something we want to see this early i mean the lightning bloom isn't terrible but we could have done a lot better with that mulligan Okay, so we're going to keep the title surge. I just didn't want to walk myself out of a turn next turn if I decide to actually use my hero power. Okay, so they are quest line. Snowfall Guardian is going to be good, but we're just going to pass the turn. Passing the turn again. The issue with playing Nazoth Shaman is you don't really necessarily want to use your hero power that much. In certain matchups, you can get away with not using it at all. This would probably be one of those matchups. Because if you give them any targets for minions to actually kill, then you turn on some of their spells that do damage to themselves. Okay, so their hand was line Warlock. That's going to be a little bit annoying. Though we should be able to keep the 8-6 frozen for a few turns. That is actually a pretty good top deck if we want to keep it frozen. Drawing into a Sleep Breaker. Okay, so Tasman. Assuming, yeah, touch of the Nath Museum. So we don't get to actually kill it this turn unless we want to use a Tidal Surge on it. I'd rather kill Tasman with the Tidal Surge. Because an 8 3 doesn't really do anything if it's frozen the entire time. Drawing into the Macaw is actually pretty cool here. There's the second touch. Oh, I'm just going to put down these two minions and allow them to attack into Alien if he really wants to. So that will draw us Nazoth. Or they're just going to be able to kill our Italian without actually attacking into it. That's fine though, we can keep that minion frozen again for the next uh, five-ish turns. They're just making our Snowfall Guardians even better. Oh, we can drop one Snowfall Guardian here. I should have hero-powered before, but oh well. That's something that I do notoriously with this deck, is I forget to hero-power because I'm trying to be greedy with an Nazoth combo. thing we have most of the cards we actually want on, in our hand. Though, losing the Amalgam and the hero card is kind of bad. Those were two of the things that we actually wanted to have still in the deck. I'm noticing a lot more people running 
Altar of Fire in a bunch of other decks besides just a mill deck for Warlock. I'm assuming because combo decks are so prevalent right now that it isn't even funny. Oh, we're going to kill both of the 6-6s. Six then attack and then put down the Macaw. I probably should have did that in a little bit of a different order, but oh well. We should get the Captain Smite or Mr. Smite off of Nizoth next turn though. We're going to mill more of our deck. And another one of the cards that I did not want to see gone. Not enough damage to kill the Macaw. Okay, so we can keep everything frozen for another turn if we really feel like it. Or just play Nazoth here. But keeping everything frozen will win us the game, so we might as well do that. I'm assuming they probably have a Soul Rend in their hand. Unless that was one of the cards cut for Ultra of Fire. Okay, so they're going to try to kill the Macaw. Interesting. Hey, at least they're clearing up some of our boards for Nizoth. Ooh, the order of operation here is kind of funny. So I don't think they get any of their demons that they just shuffled into the deck. And I never really thought about using Tasman as a way to trigger the quest right there. Okay, now we get to play our Nizoth and just finish them off with Smite and a Amalgam if it spawns an Amalgam. And it does. Alright, time for a game against Hunter. We're going to mulligan away the, the Zoth and the Cobalt, keeping the Guidance and the Portal. Drawing into Smite and Guardian, which are not cards we want to see this early. Okay, so they're playing Wolf and Tiger, which makes me kind of feel like it's just going to be Face Hunter. Going to see what we get off of this. I could choose both, but Lightning Bolt is really honestly the only one that really matters there. What we can kind of hope to do is let their board get as full as humanly possible and then just use a Snowfall Guardian where they can't play any other minions. Since they're not quest lines, so they don't have that many spells in the deck, I don't think. Just gonna hero power. Okay, so they are just face hunter. And they are going to fill up their board, so that's actually pretty good news for us. As long as we can survive, that is. Okay, we're just going to portal the initiate. Hope this goes into our minion, and it does. Okay, so they have a bunch of 1-1s, one -ones, which is kind of scary, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter too much. There's one shoot, which we can use on the 5-1, getting a frostbite here. Then we can either hero power or just use the order but we're going to hero power getting the taunt again which is actually kind of funny the bear shark it's actually been a while since i've seen that card but here we can just coin out our snowfall guardian they're going to use a piercing shot i get why they're using it on that to try to get as low as possible but it shouldn't really matter too much Man, it must be getting really chilly for them. Okay, there's an Azoth. I'm gonna see what we get off this. Snowball fight is actually kind of interesting just because it'll remove some damage from the board. I'm gonna put uh, Amalgam down and just go face. And use a Frostbite on the 5-1. Interesting they're just going face here. Because they could have killed both, probably, if they had any type of removal in their hand. Nothing can stop us from our frozen victory with Smite. Alright, time for what I assume is going to be a very cold mirror match between the two of us. Because the only Shaman decks that actually exist right now are all free Shaman. Even if this is a less traditional form of free Shaman, that is. This opening hand isn't the worst that I've ever had with this deck. The two sleep breakers should be enough to keep 
their board frozen while we try to draw into some of our late game tools. Okay, Frostbite, and just pass the turn. Okay, so they're the more traditional version, I'm assuming, of Elemental Freeze. I'm gonna put down Sleep Breaker. Okay, Granite. So their Elementals are gonna be cheaper. I wanted to do something with Granite being the central idea of the deck, but I ended up settling with Mizoth just because I thought that was a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna put down the second Sleep. Okay, so we're going to clear our board. That's an interesting card for later, especially because of all the frost spells that we have in our hand. Okay, so we're going to keep one of these frozen and then kill the other one with frostbite. No need to actually deal with it until we have a way to deal with it. We also could have just coined out the bear if we really felt like it there. Okay, so Kindling Elemental. Well, that's an interesting card to top deck. I'm gonna freeze the minion again, and then just attack into it. And then use our hero power and pass the turn. We probably just win the game through our little bear friend if we actually get to play him. Instructor, okay. I think that's a little bit too late right now for them, but it is still a good card, so who knows. Because we do have ways to just freeze the board continuously after with the bear down if we really feel like doing that instead. But you gotta bear with me with this one. I just really wanted to play this card. Probably not the best play on that turn, but I don't think Shaman has an easy way to actually do 4 damage unless they have some type of spell power. I mean, they could freeze our entire board and we can just freeze their board. Okay, so they do have a Novice Sapper. And they're going to freeze or bear. That reduces some of the damage that they're going to take. But, I remember right the... Oh, they're just going to freeze our entire board. We're going to wipe out their entire board because of it. Well, we can't attack this turn. But we do have a way to freeze their big minion, so might as well. Let's just hope they don't have a parrot in hand. Or another freeze, I guess. Okay, so they're going to transform our 12-12. I think if they allow the attack to go through... Oh, nope, they just give up. Alright, time for a game against Warlock. We're actually going to mulligan away everything here. The Instructor might be useful, but at the same time, I was facing a bunch of Zoolock. Uh, so I assumed all Warlock was going to be Zoo. And then Instructor doesn't actually do anything against that matchup. This hand is actually probably even worse just because we don't actually have a play until turn 6. And that top deck makes this hand even worse than it was before. Sure, we could put the Macaw down with nothing to copy, but that doesn't sound good. So they're actually Rogue. Okay. Thief Rogue is actually something that's been popping up a bunch. Just gonna play our loot order and then pass the turn. Gonna play the guidance to see what we get. Gonna grab the hex just in case we run into Edwin Van Cleef because that can get buffed up super quickly. And they won't expect a hex if they do play Edwin. Early, I mean. Okay, so a double agent, and then they're going to officially reveal that they're actually a rogue. It's going to kill one, and then go face. Okay, so they're going to play more double agents. They're actually, that's just a really stereotypical turn for that deck. We have a few plays we could do. We'll kill one of them, and then we can kill the 3-2. Getting a 2-4, which is actually pretty good for a 3-cost minion. Okay, so one Thief. We could get into this situation where we just freeze out their entire board and then they can't really do anything. Because Thief Rogue usually doesn't run Groot in the deck, so we'll be fine for face damage. Okay, so they're going to kill our minion. They are going to put out a bunch of minions here. 
If we top deck into a Lightning Bloom, we're actually really good. But we can see what we get off of the Guidance. Gonna grab the Dunk Tank, play the Sleep Breaker, freeze one of the three threes, get a Loop Hoarder. Okay, so I'm assuming that's probably going to be Ice Barrier, because it usually is when it comes to... Well, I guess they just randomly generated it, so there's no telling what it could actually be. Okay, they're going to play a Null. Do they have a second copy? I was really hoping we'd just freeze them out of any possible turn. Going to put down the Guardian and then pass the turn. Luckily for us, it isn't Mirror Image. That would have been really frustrating. Though it would have instantly got frozen, so I guess it wouldn't have mattered that much. It's actually pretty good that Vaporize isn't in current standard too. It allows big minions to actually exist in standard Hearthstone. Okay, so there's their Edwin. Uh, nice thing about this is we can actually just kill it next turn if we really feel like it. We're going to freeze the entire board, which will shut them out of the game for a turn. Put down our taunt and pass back. I just want to put enough damage on board so that it doesn't matter. And then they're going to instantly pass the turn back. And it is Ice Barrier. And my math is wrong. I'm off of lethal by one. I'm going to kill Edwin just because that's going to be the biggest issue if they actually manage to do it. And then we're going to coin out the hex on one of their remaining minions. I don't think there's any way they can actually come back from this given the deck that they're actually playing. If they had contraband and actually had some good cards that they got out of it, then sure they might be able to, but... This board is actually looking really frightening for them. And even if they did, we might actually have a way to just make it even more frightening with the bear. Okay, Mask of Cthulhu. A little bit too late there, but... Did they miss lethals here too? Or did they just go face... Oh, they give up. All right, now that we're through some games, let's discuss my final thoughts of the deck. So overall, the deck actually performed pretty well. It doesn't really shock me that much because of the fact that Fractured and Alterac Valley actually introduced 9 out of 10 of the cards that all support Free Shaman, which was not a deck before the set. So it's really hard to try to make a new Shaman deck without talking about Freeze, as Snowfall Guardian is just such a powerful card that it's hard to not want to include it in every deck. Then you're like, why shouldn't I include some of the other free support? Well, I do think the Nazoth combo is a little bit worse than the Yishari combo. I do think this is probably more consistent between the two, just because of the fact that you don't need as much setup as the Yishari combo, but it obviously does come with some drawback. You can't run as much draw power as you could in that variant of the deck, and I think Elemental Free Shaman is probably the best version of Free Shaman, but this is just a really funny version. It's going to catch your opponent off guard because they're not going to expect Mr. Smite and Shaman, and you have a bunch of power plays within this deck. That you can actually abuse such as the nazoth turn or even your baron glacier turn or even a brew con turn where you can actually copy it with a brilliant macaw and snowfall guardian can actually just win you the game if you can freeze out your opponent when they have a full board of minions for four turns in a row there's nothing they can actually do in that situation unless they have some type of removal tool for all your big minions that you're actually getting off of the snowfall guardians which is actually pretty hilarious. And overall, if you have the cards in this deck, I would honestly recommend you actually playing it. It is quite fun to actually play, though it isn't very fun for your opponent when they get freezed out for four turns in a row. And with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye-bye.